Hey guys, welcome back to Cody Station. Today we are playing Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves. Last time we finished Sly 2, so I thought we'd go into Sly 3 next. This is it, Sly. The gang's assembled and are in position to help you get up to that vault. For the rest of the operation, you are the ball. Roger, Bentley. I'm starting my approach. Getting over these fortress walls shouldn't be a problem. Look, we're running five by five here. Make sure everyone's in sync. I hear that. Artillery, sure you can make that shot? I endeavor not to miss. Excellent. Radio control. In position. Recovery team. On pump. Submersibles. Showtime, baby. Telekinetics. I gotta die. All right, it's the crime of the century and the ball's in motion. Requesting door via Agent Monarch. Over. Launching. Stand clear. I've got visual confirmation on the door. Nice shooting. Be advised, Paul is nearing the lab. Agent Team 6, you ready? Spear gun loaded. How's your wife doing, Richards? Oh, very well, Dr. M. Thank you for asking. Very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Man, your son, uh, what's his name, uh, Mike? Mark, sir. He, he's well, too, yeah? It's a shame you won't be seeing them again. Ah, uh, sir? Afraid I poisoned your drink at lunch. Sorry, Richards. But I don't tolerate poor performance. You should have changed the security code from one, two, three after you installed the new system. I'll improve, I swear! No, you'll die any second now. Oh. 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 <laughs> yes, water leaking into the lab. I'm on my way down. Oh, and... Get a janitor for the lab elevator. Richard's got sloppy. The Cooper vault is just across these wires. I'm en route to your position for the loot haul. Over. Oh. <laughs> 
Keeper of the cane. Oh, how I long for this. This vault belongs to the Cooper family. You're trespassing. No, my naive boy, you're trespassing. I've got the deed to this island. This fortress is mine. Everything here is mine, which now includes the key to the vault and the cane. Sorry, pal. Family heirloom. Buy a knockoff at the gift shop. Quick, let's regroup with the others. Follow me. Hurry! <laughs> Jump for it! Escape, Koopa. A weak sky. I expected more. Help! <laughs> oh, this is it's not working. Save yourself. If he wants to eat, eat this. It was like they always say, your life really does flash before your eyes. There it all was, stretching back to my childhood. Born into a family of master thieves that went back for generations, I was next in line to continue the Cooper name. But fate had different plans. I was robbed of my childhood when a ruthless gang attacked our home. The orphanage I landed in wasn't all bad. It was there that I met my lifelong friends. Bentley, he's always been the thinker. And Murray, he's the doer. We'd stuck together over the years, and our skill, our confidence, and our thieving reputation grew stronger with each heist. We thought that the good times would never end, and that our luck would never run out. Which only made things tougher when the odds finally caught up with us. Then I met this guy, McSweeney, who claimed to have run with my father's crew back in their heyday. They pulled jobs all over the world, 
and amassed quite a collection of priceless items. It was then that McSweeney told me all about the Cooper Vault. It seemed that my father, like all my ancestors, had been hiding their wealth in a secret place for generations, each one adding to the treasure hidden behind a door that if McSweeney's story is true, only a Cooper can open. Using some well-placed clues provided by McSweeney, we set out for the secret island that held the vault. On arriving, we discovered someone by the name of Dr. M had already set up shop. From the looks of it, he'd been trying to crack the thing for years, growing steadily more frustrated in his failures and more paranoid as the decades rolled by. He built himself a fortress with security as tight as Fort Knox. Getting inside the place would take precision, creativity, and moreover, it would take an army of world-class thieves. Finding and bringing together that much talent won't be easy, but to get inside the Cooper vault and collect my inheritance, I was willing to pay the price. Okay, so there hasn't been a lot of talking from my end, just because there was a bunch of dialogue in that little prologue there. But now we're going to go to the Hazard Room, which is sort of like a training type mission. And the first two games didn't really have anything that were this in-depth of training, and it's pretty boring, but we have to get through it anyways. If we're gonna make it to the Cooper Vault, we'll need to perfect our thieving skills. I've rigged this place to push us to our limits. I'm guessing these levers start the different trainers. That's right. Each will initiate a streamlined crash course in grand larceny. I'll head for the control room and we'll get things started. Dish it out. I'm ready. Okay, all great thieves have one thing in common. A ton of cash? No, they never get lost. Use the right analog stick to look around the hazard room. Try to find the Cooper gag marker I'm projecting. Great, now press down on the L3 button to ping a waypoint. That's handy. I agree. These holographic markers are an invaluable tool for finding your way around in the field. Notice how the logo moves to the destination? Try clicking the L3 button a few more times to get the hang of it. Okay, head for the waypoint and we'll commence phase two. I've programmed in a new mission destination. Press L3 to find it. The cool thing here is that if you don't have line of sight, the waypoint will automatically stretch above whatever's blocking your view. Scan the horizon and you'll always find it. Perfect. Now everyone knows that a thief's best friend is a rooftop. Provided he doesn't break his neck getting up there. Not a problem for a man with your jumping skills. Hit the X button for a standard jump. Then hit the X button a second time while in the air for an extra high double jump. All right, Bentley. What's next? As you know, it's very useful to survey guards from the rooftops. To do that, we'll have to be able to look down at them. Let me guess. Use the right analog stick? Yep. Try to find the marker I'm projecting down there. Excellent. Now look up at that pillar. I'm projecting another marker. Great. Now put all these skills to use and get to the remaining waypoints. Should be easy if you ping them with the L3 button and look around. Nice one down. Good job, Sly. 
Alright, you made it! You're now ready to take on the meanest of navigation tasks! Okay, so now we've got another one of these to do. And I, I mean, they're really easy, they're just... They're not fun to do at all, and you just kind of have to get through them. Heck of a page turner, that book. Let's see if you remember them all. Check out those small points on that wire. You can land on them light as a feather using your ninja spire jump. Easy. I just jump and hit the circle button. Exactly. Try getting over to the other platform. I mean, if you've played Sly 1 and 2, then you probably already know how to do all this stuff, so I don't know why they did a training... a set of training missions for Sly 3. Looking good, Sly! You know how I love the second story work. Sure, but how do you feel about tight spaces? Try getting through the small opening in that wall. Hit the circle button when you're close to crawl inside. Okay, even though we finished those training missions, though there will be more later. Okay, so now we're gonna head right into episode one. Getting inside a world-class vault would take a team of world-class thieves, a group of specialists, each member contributing their own particular talent. It was clear that we needed Murray back. Not only was I missing a lifelong friend, but his brute strength helped get us out of more than a few scrapes in the past. When Bentley was injured during the whole clockwork affair, Murray blamed himself, eventually leaving the team. We tried to console him, but going out on his own was something he needed to do. He said he wanted to find his spiritual center. We got word that Murray ended up in the Australian Outback, where he studied a mystic art called the Dream Time from an Aboriginal guru. From all accounts, things went pretty well, and his teacher even sent him on a walkabout to locations all over the globe to complete the training. Latest reports have cited Murray in beautiful Venice, Italy, but what he's doing there is a mystery. I just hope he steers clear of the local mob boss, Octavio. Growing up, this guy used to be a real celebrity in the neighborhood. Everyone loved to hear him sing opera and said he was destined to be the next great tenor. But just as his career started to take off, musical tastes changed. Suddenly, it was all about rock music, and no one wanted to listen to opera anymore. He held on to a few fans, and it was these mobsters that took him into the business. Heading onto this guy's turf was dangerous, but worth it for a chance to make things right with Murray.
Okay, so we're in the safe house, and if you'll notice, there's like a little holographic marker above Sly's head, and that means he has a job to pull off. So this game actually tells us who still has missions left before we even head out the door, so that's pretty cool. But, uh, but we're not going to get right into things in this video. I think we're just going to go ahead and end it here, and we'll, we'll get right into the game in the next video. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.